Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my Stencil Girl Creative Team project for the month of June 2020. The theme this month to challenge the creative team is topography, which to me means using uh, letters and numbers in a graphic way to add interest to your art. And using Stencil Girl stencils to do this is a fantastic way to add these graphic elements to your art. So I grabbed a couple stencils that I have. They have more. They have so many nice alphabet and, you know, stencils that have letters and numbers. Um, tons of them. I only have a few because I don't have the entire catalog, unfortunately. So I decided to make some prints using my gel plate. This is my 12 by 12 gel plate. I know that my theme for my project is going to be coffee, uh, the love of coffee, the obsession with coffee. <laughs> and so I'm using papers that have something to do with coffee. I have some coffee stained papers. I have some craft colored papers. I have the paint colors, which are things like raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber, burnt umber. Um, I threw in some, some, uh, cheddar and some Sedona from Dina Wakely and some ancient which is like an interesting uh, metallic and a little bit of copper those type of colors that you would associate with coffee and tea um, are what I'm using for my color palette for this project so here I'm starting up with some stencils this one is L400 letter mania it's a 9 by 12 I really like this one because Yes, you can tell it's letters. I mean, you know it's letters, sort of, but it doesn't say anything. It does. It's. I think it might be the alphabet in order, but they're all overlapping. I'm not even sure it's in order, but it just makes a really interesting graphic look. And if you look at it, you're like, yeah, that's letters, but you don't really think about it being letters. So I put some darker colors down, laid the stencil over the top, and then without removing the stencil, I put some other lighter colors over the top. And then when I pull off the stencil, I have a dark outline with a, a lighter fill-in. And I printed that onto some, some coffee-stained notebook paper, which in the end doesn't really show through as much because the colors were very opaque. But... Um, still a cool idea. It was coffee stained paper and it's a coffee themed thing. And actually when I started to to put it onto the project with the collage, I could smell the coffee. So that's always fun. So then I'm just doing now a cleanup print to get rid of all the rest of the crusty bits there. And moving on to a different stencil. This one is called um, Alpha Jumbo Large L592. And I realized that I don't want to get the bottom part that has just the let the alphabet in order dirty again. Um, I've already gotten it dirty and I've had to clean it. I cleaned it with some rubbing alcohol and I had to clean all the paint off it because I want to use that part of the stencil as actual stencil to make words. So I want to be able to see through it and if I get if I get the acrylic paint on the stencil, I don't ever clean my stencils. That was actually the first time I'd ever cleaned one was when I cleaned that off. So I decided to cut the stencil in half. It's really two different things. It's got this interesting jumbled up piece and then it also has this very orderly um, letters that you could use to uh, stencil actual words. So I put some light colors down, put the stencil down, picked up some of the color through the stencil. Um, what I didn't realize though is that the color that I use for the light color is translucent. Um, yeah, didn't really realize that, but pretty much in anything that's a yellow of some sort is translucent, uh, unless it's mixed with titanium white. Or, and so when I did this one, you really couldn't see the letters anymore. It's still an interesting print, but it just doesn't have the letters in it, so I didn't end up using it. But um, I wanted to show you all the fun different things that I was doing when I was gel printing. I know people like to watch this, so you can't really see the letters anymore. But uh, the next one, I put some dark um, burnt sienna down, and I wanted to use this this little stencil from the club, Stencil Club August 2020, which has some words on it, some writing, 
and it's got tall, thin letters. Uh, it says something, but I don't really know what. And I wanted to use it as part of my um, composition just because it has the tall, thin letters. So I put it down and then I, I also threw on some of Kat Kerr's mark making stencils from a club uh, last month or the month before, I'm not sure. And put some other color through it, then picked it up onto some coffee stained uh, music paper, some tissue paper and a tag, uh, just picking up all the little bits because uh, I wanted to find out what it would look like on the music paper. You know, we all like to use music paper and text weight paper and antique papers in our collages because that's part of topography too, just using those those things that we're so familiar with in a way that is graphic and interesting without making it obvious, I guess is kind of what I'm going for. So then I knew I needed a contrasting piece and so I wasn't sure which color I wanted to use so I did this blue um, one first with the the alpha jumble and I put way too much paint on there and one of my tubes of paint was really gloppy so I ended up having to pull these tissue paper pieces first just to get rid of some of that excess uh, paint is just so gloppy. <laughs> And then I put a lighter color of blue on over the stencil, pulled it off and picked it up on just a regular piece of text weight paper. I didn't uh, go for one of the, the coffee or tea stained papers. I did also use one little tiny tea bag paper, which I did end up using in the composition. So I don't know exactly where it was in the process, but that one's pretty cool. I like it. Um, picking up the excess with some light colored paint. I think that's tight and buff um, Just to make you know an extra piece and I did use some of that craft colored deli paper there Which was another paper that I um, took out of my stash And I thought I might use that wasn't sure Didn't up end up using the blue ones at all, but I did use the red ones so I I decided to show you both just because you know sometimes in the process you're not sure exactly what you want and so you end up just printing and printing and printing. I have so much paper left over to collage with that I can do many 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 more things but um, I decided to go back to the letter mania stencil again. I put down some uh, red and then some uh, barn red type of color and then over the top I'm putting like a tomato red and some some shimmery paper, uh, paint that is kind of an orange. And I'm stencil printing some of those off onto some of my paper because it looks really cool. If you just have a lot of paint you can turn the stencil over and uh, put it on your scratch paper to make another print which I like to do as well. I don't want to waste anything. Uh, then I used some um, Naples yellow over the top to pick up this print and this is the one I end up using in the composition so it's cool it's subtle you can see the letters it's got a little shimmer um, but it's not so blatantly obvious that the background is letters because I plan to stencil over the top so this is a handled gift bag and sometimes I like to make art on these gift bags I, I've actually done it quite a bit um, I don't use them as gift bags. I use that as the art and you can just put it up on your wall the way it is. I have three of them in my kitchen um, that are, you know, food related ones that are done on bags and just hung up in the kitchen in a, in a triptych. And it just, it looks really cool. And I don't know, I just, I think they're fun and perhaps you could use it as a gift. I mean, yes, you could use it as a gift bag if you wanted to, but I actually, with the ones I have in my in my kitchen, I glued down the backs so that they can't open anymore, um, and just hung them up using uh, the handles that come with the bag. It's cute. It's fun. It's just a different a different substrate to work on. So I took some of my uh, prints that I had made. Um, with all the different coffee and tea colors and then I'm putting them down on onto my well, I taped off the edges first 
so that I would have a square to work with. Uh, I, did, I wanted to have a border around the edge of the craft colored paper. I like it that way. I like to have the borders. So I tore up some of my pieces just into kind of rectangles um, just because that's the easiest thing to do when you're tearing is rectangles. So um, I'm not obsessed with rectangles or anything. I just it's easier than tearing it into a circle. And I'm just layering them based on color and pattern, I'm trying to get some variation in my background. And you can see it's all done with letters, but it doesn't look, it doesn't say anything. It's not like you look at it and you say, oh my gosh, I need to find a word in there. Maybe some people would do that because some people are kind of like that. But um, it's just interesting pattern. It, it's graphic. It's cool looking. And that's to me what the topography challenge was all about. So then I had to take my tape off and I, I struggled a little bit until I started to heat up the tape. It wanted to stick to the bag, but I got it done. I sealed it all with some fluid matte medium so that everything would be all sealed in for my background. And now I need something to put on my foreground. And like I told you, I wanted to make it about coffee. And so at first I was going to draw a typical coffee cup, you know, with a saucer and a spoon or something like that. But I thought, you know, these days most people get their coffee from the to-go. <laughs> and so I decided to make a to-go, a hot to-go container. And in that way I could use my little accent color piece as just an interesting focal over my cup by just putting it on the area that's um, where your hands go. My original idea was to use that whole piece and make a coffee cup out of it, the red or the blue, which I ended up using the red. Um, but then I got this idea and I thought it was better and I do like it. I think it turned out better than my original thought with a coffee cup and saucer and spoon was my original thought. So then I got out some archival ink. This is permanent ink in a color called potting soil, which is a brown. And again, going with these same earthy coffee and tea colors. So potting soil is perfect for this. And this is the other half of that um, alpha jumble large stencil. Remember I told you I had to clean one. <laughs> this is the one I cleaned with alcohol and scrubbing. <laughs> had a lot of paint on it. And I am using a little brush. This is a, a makeup brush, actually. They sell them as makeup brushes, but I think they're great stencil brushes when you want to do something really fine and um, small. You have a lot of control. It's just got a little round brush on it. And I'm rubbing it onto my ink pad and then going through and adding words to my, my little red piece. I put coffee, I put latte, I put espresso, I put Americano. Um, some of them didn't, up show, didn't end up showing up. But again, the words are there. You can read the words on it. You know what they are, but maybe the whole word is not there once I cut it out. So I'm just filling up my red background with um, words that are related to coffee. So that's another way you can use the stencils. So then I needed the coffee cup. I, I had already drawn it, but I needed to color it in some way. And I decided to use watercolor to do this because I thought I could get an interesting fade. Um, you know, coffee cups are generally white unless they're from the, the Starbucks. I guess that maybe they're not white, but general a generalized coffee cup is white, whether it's styrofoam or cardboard. And then it usually has a black lid um, or a dark green lid to go. And then you have the little sleeve on there that protects your hand from the hot coffee. And when you're trying to make something white, it's not really white, right? It's really kind of shades of grays and blues when you look at something white. You, we just, our mind reads it as white, but it's not. So I needed to use something that I could blend. So I decided watercolor was a good choice. And I transferred my drawing onto watercolor color paper 
and then this is cold press uh, 300 pound watercolor paper which is a little bit thick for collage but I'm just going to glue it on anyway so um, not too concerned and I'm using a dark blue pigment and for the coffee cup itself I used wet in wet so I put some water on there in the area that I wanted to color and then I'm blending different mixes of that, that one blue color to start out with um, and dropping it in so that it looks as if the, the light is coming from the left hand side and shining onto the cup from the top left probably. Then the lid, um, I should have let that dry but I'm impatient. That's the reason I'm not a good watercolor artist because I can't wait for things to dry and I get bleeds and blooms all the time <laughs> because I can't stop and just let it dry. Never happens. So I'm painting the top of the cup with a black watercolor pigment. Um, I don't know if it's carbon black. I don't know what color it is, but anyway, it's black. And mixing varying um, amounts of water in with the black to make lighter or darker and then um, in some cases picking up an area with a clean wet brush that I've that I've um, you know dried off to lift where I got some some color I didn't want so I have to go over that the, the whole thing a couple times to make it dark enough. I need that little hole where you put your mouth uh, to drink the coffee through the lid. So I got to put that on there, but it's all bleeding together. I'm having to keep cleaning up. Um, <laughs> you know, the struggles. The struggles are real. And then I'm adding in a little bit of this black pigment into the cup as well. Uh, if you have something in it, a color on something, you should probably put it in more than one spot. So I don't want it to be black and blue. I want to mix the colors together. And I do end up taking some of that that uh, dark, probably Payne's Gray is probably what color it is, come to think of it, um, dark blue, and adding it into the black as well. So here I am with my second layer. Um, watercolor, whole different process. I'm not going to focus on it here because we're talking about stencils. And by the way, speaking of stencils, if you don't think you can draw a coffee cup like this, they have a fantastic coffee cup stencil to use for this project. In fact, Stencil Girl has more than one. Here's a couple of them. Uh, I just don't happen to have these stencils, so I had to, I had to wing it and draw it myself. They also have some stencils that have copy, coffee beans on them that are really cute, and coffee rings. You know how when you set your your coffee down. It can get a ring on your paper. They have have stencils of that. I mean, you could have this whole like coffee thing going on for days with all the different fun stencils that Stencil Girl has. So I cut out my coffee cup and then I took that little red piece that I had um, put the words on and cut it to fit um, over the area that would you would hold with your hand, glued those together, glued it on to the bag in the middle of my area, a little bit, a little bit lower, um, with some tacky glue because I wanted it to really stick down. Remember, this is heavy paper; it's watercolor paper. So, um, if you're enjoying this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so that you know when there's a fresh new video. Of course, check out Stencil Girl products and all the fantastic. Um, designed by artists stencils that they have for people who love stencils and mixed media and uh, you can share this of course and pin it on Pinterest so the next thing that I'm doing is I'm taking a uh, fabric Castell artist pit pin this is a pin that has India ink in it so it's permanent and I'm going I went around all the way around the coffee cup and then I blended it out with a water brush so that the coffee cup appears integrated like as if it's part of, you know, part of the, the bag, that it's not something separate that I glued on. That's really a great way to add things um, as focal points to make sure that you shadow around the edges with something. And then I have my white Posca pen and I'm just adding a few bright white highlights 
Um, yeah, this is watercolor, bad me. I'm putting acrylic over the top. But guess what? It's mixed media. We've got collage, we've got acrylic, we've got watercolor, we got pins, we've got everything. It's mixed media. And then um, and my final thing to do was to draw some steam coming out the little hole as if it's got some nice hot coffee. And in the process of my little drawing, I put a little heart in the steam. So that's it for me for my Stencil Girl Creative Team project for June, Topography. Um, coming up is the photos and you will see another project that I did using exactly the same process and even the same stencils. It just happens to have an apple. So that's it for me. Bye-bye. <laughs>